cover story now, a new book from the author of the bestseller, Queen Bees and Wannabes. It changed our perspective of teenage girls and was the basis, by the way, in part, for that movie Mean Girls. Well, now Rosalind Wiseman is focusing on the other half in Masterminds and Women. We spoke to three kids she interviewed who shared what it's like to be a boy these days. I'm hardworking. I'm very athletic. I am quite academic. There's no need to argue. Parents just don't understand. As a guy, you always shade your emotions a little bit. When my mom picked me up from school, she liked to ask a lot of questions. How's school? Like, hi, how are you? How was your day? Tell me everything. Nothing too exciting going on. And usually, I don't want to say anything. Of course you have the athletes, the academics. Those are the more social kids that everybody like looks up to. I would say I'm at least as close with my best guy friends as girls are with their best girlfriends. One guy and one girl go on a date and it's very awkward for them. They're in groups now when they go on, on date nights is because it's just a little more comfortable that way. Playing sports, it definitely boosts their reputation. If you're really good at a sport, then obviously a lot of people are going to be really impressed about you. I see a lot of guys tweeting and posting on Facebook. They feel like putting someone else down will raise their social status. Letting the person know that I can take advantage of you and I can make you look so stupid in front of everybody. Guys can be mean, but in a different way as girls. Like, girls can be verbally mean, guys can be verbally and physically mean. Guys face just as complicated issues as girls do and have just as much trouble dealing with those problems. Rosalind Wiseman is with us now. Rosalind, nice to see you. It's Thanks for having me, Matt. I, I think a lot of people immediately are going to say, wait a second, this is the woman who wrote the <laughs> book that in part Mean Girls was based on. So did you find the male equivalent of Mean Girls? Oh, sure. And all different kinds of things, because the world of boys is just as complex. The problem is, is that we think everything is so simple with boys because they don't tell us what's going on. But underneath that is a huge amount of problems, complexities, feelings that they need to be able to get out. Let's talk about communications. One of the young men in that piece says, you know, his mom picks him up at school and asks him all kinds of questions. And he doesn't really want to share much. They keep yeah. a lot inside. And I think a lot of parents brush it off to, oh, he's just a boy. Right. Is there a danger in that? Well, here's the deal. I want parents to think about it from this perspective. The boy gets into the car or gets picked up by the parent in some way, and he has been carrying around or being a certain way in school with armor, basically, of how he just needs to be in school with, other, with his peers. And he gets in, and if you have a relatively healthy relationship with your kid, he wants to relax and decompress. And then what happens is parents say, well, how was your day today? So to them what it sounds like an interrogation. Totally. And so they shut down. I want you to think about it from a parent's point of view. If you walk in from a hard day and your son said to you, so, Dad, how was your day today? Did you answer all of your emails? How was your presentation? How did it go? Did you get your promotion? Why not? Aren't you going to be exhausted and shut down? So the boys want to communicate, but they want to communicate in a more organic fashion. Absolutely. That's exactly what they want. And they don't want to have constant talking. What they want is a little bit of space, and then they can talk later. We heard one of the young men in the piece say he has friendships that he feels are as close with his male friends as girls have with their female friends. Yes. Do they share? Do boys share with their male friends? Well, they do, but it's complicated because at a certain point they feel like if they really talk about things that are really scary to them, it feels weak. And so what we've got to do is be able to tell boys and show boys that actually it's not weak to ask for help. It's a capacity. It's a skill. I, I, I want to touch on that because I want to look at some startling statistics, okay? According to the Census Bureau, for every 100 girls who, ha who have a learning disability, 160 boys do. Listen to these two. According to the CDC, for every 100 girls who commit suicide, 549 boys do, and according to a Secret Service report, 100% of school shooters are boys. So 
this is stark evidence that a lot of boys it are is. suffering in They're silence. They're suffering, and we can do something about this. That's the thing, is that what boys have come to me for years for advice about their parents, about girls, about their friends. And I needed to realize that actually sometimes I wasn't giving them the advice that they needed. So I needed to step back and ask the boys. And this book is not just me talking about boys. It's in conjunction with 200 boys around the country, day in and day out, who helped me go through, my mom needs to know this, my dad needs to know this. This doesn't work when my dad talks to me like this. This is my life. This is what breakups feel like to me. They are telling us what's going on with that. I'm the father of a 12-year-old boy and a 6-year-old boy as yeah. well. Big event in my house this week. My son went to middle school and he got a phone, his first cell phone, right. which opens up the whole world of social media and texting. What do I need to know about how boys use those tools? Well, they text. They don't usually email. You know, they're that they're but at the same time, look, kids have been playing video games for a long time. What I want parents, most boys are, what I want them to realize is the social networking that they're doing on video games is actually where they're learning how to act and treat each other. So by the time they get their phone, their values are pretty set. But you need to tie it to your concrete values of what your boy should be acting like in real, you know, in real life because One they're the same. One part of me, though, wants to check on the texts. Oh, you can And the do that. other part wants to say, I trust you because I think trust is empowering. Yep, right. And I agree. So it's incremental freedom. So for a middle school kid, absolutely, you know their password and you can check it. And as they show you that they are responsible, then they can do this. But what I really also want to say to parents is, is that I did this book for parents, for masterminds. But I didn't think boys were going to read this book for parents, right? So what I did also is I created a book for boys, an e-book, that is downloadable for free for them. All right.